Okay, so let's return to our narrative. I'm a 1970s scientist and I'm trying to understand how um, tumours occur, what's driving tumour formation. So what were some of the key experiments that really established that tumours are caused by cellular genes that have been mutated rather than viral infections? Um, well, at some point in molecular biology, people des designed these experiments called um, transfect transfection assays, that they were able to take some DNA, put it into human cells, and have that, um, that, that DNA integrate into the genome and it be expressed. So they were able to transfect and manipulate cells and look at the effects it's having. Okay? So, um, so, so there was a development of a new assay um, which gave people the ability to manipulate DNA, put it into cells, and look for changes. Okay? Now, on top of that, as we discussed last week, there were some very clear examples of cancers that, that are caused in response to carcinogens. Now, we looked at um, the, the, the epidemiology data behind lung cancer. So we could see smoking um, in, in a smoking population some 20, 30 years later, you get outbreaks of lung cancer. So there's a clear link there between these chemical compounds and the formation of cancers, indicating that maybe these chemical compounds are causing mutations which are then leading to the development of cancers. Okay, So these mutations are affecting these oncogenes or these tumor suppressor genes. Okay, um, so and also if you look at um, skin cancer, it's very clear that ultraviolet radiation um, causes DNA damage leading to skin cancer. So there's some very clear evidence of these non-viral sources of cancer through um, carcinogens or just you know mutations causing cancer. So um, so these kinds of agents. Um, induce cancer through their ability to um, mutate these oncogenes or tumor suppressor proteins. So this technique I was talking about is called calcium phosphate transfection and this technique in conjunction with these carcinogens they could put the two together and drive experiments to see how um, DNA that had been treated with carcinogens then transfected into normal cells causes cancer. So clearly, it's the um, human genes that are affected by these chemicals, which then when you put these, this human DNA into normal human cells or mammalian cells, it causes cancers. Okay? So there's no viral DNA involved in this process whatsoever, and we can drive the process of cancer formation. So, um, so we've got this technique, this calcium phosphate transfection technique, and we can put human DNA into, or mammalian DNA into mammalian cells, and we can see what effect it has. So in these experiments, they were looking at um, mouse embryo fibroblasts. Okay, so um, you've also got to appreciate that at this stage, people had got tissue culture techniques working in the labs, right? And also, um, whilst early tissue culture techniques involved transformed, virally transformed cells, they were now able to use fibroblasts, which are normal skin cells, normal um, skin cells, and then they can grow those and then integrate into these normal cells, which are not cancerous, they can integrate DNA that has been perturbed by carcinogens. And then um, after that, they can then start to look for um, the effect that this this um, perturbed DNA can have on cells, making those cells tumorigenic. So this is the basic experiment they were doing. So you have some of these mouse embryo normal cells here, and you chemically transform them. Okay, so you, you treat them with a chemical that causes DNA mutations. You then extract the DNA from these mammalian cells, and then using this new technique of calcium phosphate um, transfection assay, you then take the um, DNA and you transform it into normal mouse fibroblasts. Okay, so you're taking mammalian DNA that's been transformed 
or has been treated with um, a carcinogen and then you transform the, that DNA into normal cells. And what you get is that within this population of cells you get clusters of cells that start to form these foci and a foci is just cells that have um, have increased growth characteristics and they've um, also um, exhibiting properties that you would associate with tumor cells and then when you take these foci the cells these blue cells here if you like and then you um, actually put them into a mouse model then these cells establish themselves within the, um, the model and they um, start to grow into a tumor so that the body is supplying them with nutrients and they're starting to you know um, grow in, in the same way that, that a tumor would so this is a clear example of tumor formation in the absence of any viral transforming agents. Okay, the only way this tumor can be formed is from this mammalian DNA that's been chemically treated, and then this chemically treated DNA was put into normal mouse cells, causing, um, and then when that DNA was integrated into these normal mouse cells, it, the expression of this DNA as proteins gave rise to these foci and these foci when injected into a mouse gave rise to tumors so the um, the chemical treatment of the DNA has mutated either these oncogenes or these tumor suppressor genes okay and then the mutation of these genes has then altered the cell growth abilities and given rise to a tumor so clearly it's it's the um, endogenous genes within the mammalian genome that when they're mutated that's what's giving rise to cancer so it's a very important experiment okay and we kind of take it for granted these days because we understand intuitively um, how cancers form but there had to be some experiments that clearly gave rise to this intuitive understanding that we now have and, and these were the experiments so as we've just discussed in those previous slides um, the um, mouse fibroblasts were um, transformed by these endogenous genes that had been mutated and that there was no traces of any viral um, DNA in this, in this process. And, um, and also um, an important control, and you've got to have controls when you do these, ex do these experiments, is that when you take um, the DNA of normal cells that is not chemically treated with these carcinogens you don't get the formation of these um, these foci or the tumors okay so th th they're the controls that we're using now when you look at these these foci that, that they they transferred they the, the cells because they're growing up from the from in the dish you can see them growing differently to the cells around them they, they've lost their anchorage independence and that became, we talked about this kind of anchorage um, um, dependence um, last week, because remember during metastasis, the cells have to um, break away from the neighbors and then, then be transported around the cells. So typically, um, um, cells are anchored to each other. And also, they're, um, it's the neighboring cells which limit the growth of, of each other. There's this signaling goes on between the cells and they, 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 they don't overgrow each other. But these foci clearly are overgrowing and growing on top of each other and they, they've lost these characteristics. This is just showing um, some of these this is just showing some of these foci on the petri dish. So here's the normal cells growing um, in this fashion here so they're they're um, growing side by side, only one layer of cells thick, and once, um, as the cells come into contact with each other, it limits the growth of that cell through these um, communication that happens. Whereas in the foci here, you've got um, the cells growing in layers and layers and layers on top of each other. So they've lost that anchorage dependence. And also you can see that um, whilst these normal cells are clearly differentiated into these different shapes and these cell types. As these um, cells become transformed by the mutant DNA, they they become less differentiated in their appearance. Um, so another series of experiments 
was done looking at, um, excuse me, So following on from those transfection experiments, another series of experiments was done and in this instance they were taking um, DNA from human tissue samples, so from human bladder cancers, lung cancers, colon carcinomas and, and various you know, leukemias, different cancer types, taking this DNA and then transforming that DNA into normal mouse fibroblasts and again that um, DNA from the cancer cells was causing the normal mouse cells to form these foci. So again, if you, this new technique where you can integrate DNA um, into the genome of these mammalian cells, once that um, mutated DNA was expressed, then it was able to transform the cells.